Hello everyone, and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. This is another video, um, courtesy of Mark Littler. And it's something pretty extraordinary. It's probably one of the most extraordinary products that I've ever been allowed to taste, in all honesty. And as you can see by the title, it is a Springbank. It is a syndicate bottling of Springbank. But there is a large story to tell. So, 1992, uh, which is not only the distillery vintage of this whiskey, it's also my birth year, so a bit of a connection here already. Several friends from the south of England decided to buy 20 casks of Springbank for the princely sum of £400 each, which just isn't going to be done these days at all. Um, they were consecutive casks, so they were casks 135, 3 to 154. It was the same distillate distilled on the same day, that filled these barrels. They were all hogshead casks. For those of you that aren't aware what a hogshead is, it's essentially a rebuilt, typically American oak cask, 250 litres, possibly a little bit more. They essentially add a few more staves into it to give a larger surface area, longer maturation, slightly less wood influence. Um, and they were bottled at different ages uh, when these folks decided to put these uh, put their money towards these casks at Springbank. And I think they were anywhere from 16 to 25 years old. Today, I have the privilege of trying a 23 year old uh, from cask 147, bottled in 2015, 51.9% alcohol. Um, I'll see if I can get this to focus on this rather splendid label. Jesus, I just wanted to focus like here. Quite an amazing looking thing. Very unique label, quite special. Everything's natural colour, it's non-chill filtered, as you would imagine it to be. Um, <clears throat> Mark is obviously selling these bottles. Um, these are £520 per bottle, which in the grand scheme of Springbank, kind of, I think it's a fair price. Like, it's a lot of money, don't get me wrong. But if you really want, love Springbank and want some very unique single cast collections, you know, these are here. Um, there is a bit of a sad story behind why this is open, why they're for sale. Uh, the, the unfortunate widow of one of the gentlemen who was part of the syndicate, um, obviously her, her husband passed away. Um, you know, our deepest condolences, I doubt she'll watch this video, but our deepest condolences to you anyway, that is a, a, an awful thing to experience. Um, she doesn't particularly know what to do with 57 bottles of cask strength Springbank. I mean, you can enjoy one or two of them, but you know, you want to try something different in your life, as good as this stuff is. So, they are now for sale. Um, there is a link below um, in like the info box. Feel free to click on that and follow it through. Um, but I'm privileged enough to be able to talk to you about this whiskey and a birth year vintage Springbank, which isn't something I thought I'd be able to do. So, everything about it is natural, as we would imagine. Let's see if I can bring this in here. As you can see I'm loving this new uh, this new camera feature. We can do things I've not only done before. We typically have a cameraman but I'm flying solo today. <coughs> Beautiful kind of... Yeah, I'd say golden. I know golden is used to describe whiskey quite a lot but that is the definition of just gold liquid. Um, this bottle's been stationary for, for a while and there's a little bit of kind of frosting on the bottom where some of the fats and oils have separated which is another beautiful element to it. But let's smell, let's taste, what's going on? Okay. <clears throat> it's quite, one knows there's quite a bit going on there. Uh, okay, so the, the, the booze is a bit spiky, I'll be honest. As soon as you take a gentle sniff of it, it kind of, whew, kind of rides in quite heavily. Um, just means you've got to be a bit more careful around it. The nose initially is tropical fruit and hay, kind of farmyardy, but also with like pineapple and mango. There's a dirty, funky Campbelltown classic Springbank thing going on with this. Freshly cut apple, pretentious note, I know. But when you cut into the apple and you get that kind of spritz of the juice kind of directly into your senses, 
there's a lot of that. There's also like a barley sugar note, and I'll be honest with you in the best way possible, this nose reminds me quite a lot of the old Glenlivet and the Dora 16 year old, which was my favourite Glenlivet ever, which they don't make anymore. Um, but it, it's, the, it's that plus that bit of funk and that slight smokiness. There's a slight mintiness to it, like glacier mints, you know, that really kind of sense uh, sinus clearing mintiness. I ate mango for breakfast this morning. I don't know if that's just my brain putting two and two together, but the tropical fruit notes on this are quite outrageous. This has been in the glass for about 20 minutes ish. I didn't want to drink it straight away. Smoke's very subtle. Um, I had a chat with Mark about this bottle and um, he's tried it and he told me that he, he's quite happy that it's not a very cask dominant style. There's still a bit of spirit running through it. And I do get that because there's a slight minerally tone. Um, the smoke that you get on things like Springbank 10 and Springbank 15 is it's slightly more present. It's a little bit more um, focused for want of a better word. But with this, it's just lingering in the back. It's like a very soft pouring of um, ashy, minerally smoke. If anything, it's really accentuating that apple and mango note. It's really pushing it up quite a bit. Let's taste it. That tropical thing, that tropical thing just doesn't go away. I love whiskies with tropical fruit notes and the, and this is really hitting a lot of highs for me. Um, the arrival is classic Springbank. It's oily. There's a slight funk to it. In fact, the funk leads the way. Is that a Daft Punk song? Uh, but the funk leads the way. The ashiness, the mineraliness, a slight intensity of alcohol. But it's almost like prepare, it's like cleansing your palate for what is about to arrive, which is just like a smorgasbord of tropical fruit, big fresh apple, pineapple, mango, kiwi. There's even like a a lime, lemon lime zest thing. Um, that kind of like bracing, not tart, but like almost refreshing citrus. I will have another taste. I was trying not to be as silent as before. The finish, it's almost like the start of it coming all the way back round, like a perfect circle of a whiskey. What I can taste across my tongue is almost as if it's been like lacquered with oil. I feel like there's something around my tongue. The smoke is kind of lingering all around my cheeks and like behind my tongue and like the, sort of like the top of my throat. And yeah, that ashiness, that mineraliness, it's almost clean. I know to describe a smoky whiskey as clean is unusual. I don't think I've ever done that before, but it really is. It's, it's almost crisp. Like the whole thing, the whole package is a crisp Springbank 23 year old. Second time round, the smoke and the prickle of alcohol seem to kind of move from side to side of the palate. It's almost like they're playing ping pong or something.
the inter the intermingling of those two things of smoke and alcohol is honestly reminding me a lot of the finish of some Optimal bottles that I've tried. I have no idea if it's just peated as Optimal. I highly doubt it is. But it has that thing with it. The minerality, which I think I've made up as a word, springing out, coming a little bit more present. Yeah, like chalk and limestone. Um, like being in a quarry, almost. <clears throat> Excellent whiskey. I mean, most of you watching this did award Springbank uh, Best Distillery at the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards, and you know, they do make fantastic whiskey. There is no way about that. And the fact this was distilled in the year I was born, um, I think it's kind of adding to the mystique a lot of it for me. Would I buy one to treat? I'm thinking about it. Um, genuinely incredible. Um, old. Bourbon Cast Campbelltown at Cash Strength. What can you say? Um, nine and a half. Seriously? Rarity, price, all that stuff. Taste wise, that's up there. That's a, obviously a personal thing. Big tropical fruit, a little bit of smoke, buzzing alcohol. And a nose, which is just pineapple and mango. Nine and a half. That's from me. Um, I have a little bit left in this glass, and I've got some paperwork to do, so I'm going to just save that for that. But thank you all for watching. Um, all info regarding this bottle will be below, so click down there and check it out. Um, there's loads of information on Mark's website about this whiskey and tons of other stuff. And uh, once again, I thank you, Mark, for allowing me to taste this, because... That's quite incredible, I'll be honest with you. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, hopefully next week there will be a cameraman here and he can make all of this look a lot better. But yeah, uh, thank you all so much. Uh, this was the second video of our sort of Mark Littler bookend series and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Cheers.